this moment to which you have gathered our lives. Lord, we ask that you bless this time to your use. Bless, O oh Lord, your word to our hearts. Remove from us, Lord, all that is not and then plant the seed of your word in our hearts, Lord. Fertilize and make grow that which is fruitful for your purposes. For we ask and pray these things through Christ who is our Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I was a part of Toastmasters many, 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 many years ago. One of the things they told us was never make excuses for the way you sound or what you're about to say. So here I go breaking that rule. Pardon my voice this morning. I have a little one who is in, in JK. And so every week, Almost. It seems like the poor is ever bringing home the goodies <laughs> uh, for us and for the family. So um, I'll try my best this morning. So I want to share with you today from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. Here Jesus says to his disciples, Do not worry, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive after all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. As I thought about these readings, I realized that over my lifespan I have been given many, many gifts, so many that it is impossible for me to even begin to recall the details of all that I have received. And I'm sure that it is perhaps the same for you, that persons who have given you things over the course of your life, and you can't remember everything that you've ever received. But permit me to date myself for a moment. For I remember receiving uh, my first 35 millimeter camera as a gift from one of my aunts. And to me, that was just such an awesome gift at the time. It still is an awesome gift. And I recall learning to load that 35 millimeter film and unload. It's a very intricate process, right? Making sure that I had the right speed of film for the time of day that I wanted to take uh, my pictures. And then once I finished that roll, taking the roll of film down to the Photoshop and maybe having to wait a couple of hours or if they were really busy waiting a couple of days until you were able to get those photos back. Does it sound familiar? Yes. Okay, that's so not a lot. All right. And so, <laughs> the modern folks are used to the digital cameras, right? But I remember doing all of these things and uh, just the joy that it was, the sense of joy that I got when I got that package of photos back and I was able to look through those photos at the pictures that I've taken. And, all, and at times also be pleasantly surprised by the pictures that I've forgotten that I've taken. Because you know sometimes you take photos and you pile up those rolls and you take them all one time. But in hindsight, I believe that I demonstrated my thankfulness for that gift, the gift of that camera, by the way in which I took care of it, the great care that I took of that camera. I hardly let anyone else use it, let alone touch it. It was mine. And in a similar way, as God's human creatures, we demonstrate our thankfulness to God by how we care for the lives which He has given us, the lives with which He has entrusted us with our own lives and the lives of those around us, and also for how we care for all of the material gifts and blessings that we have received in this life. The way that we care for these things demonstrates our mindfulness and our gratitude. And in today's gospel passage from Matthew, after teaching his disciples about the impossibility of serving two masters, Jesus tells them not to worry. 
He tells them not to worry about what they will eat, or about what they will drink, or about what they will wear. And he points them to the fact and to the reality of God's gracious and attentive care and provision for every part of his creation. And so today's reading from the book of the prophet Joel, in that book he admonishes the earth, he admonishes the creatures in the field not to fear. He tells the children of Zion to rejoice in the knowledge that this God will restore all that they have lost. That when they place their faith and trust in Him, He will never let them be put to shame. Even the psalmist, the psalmist likewise rejoices in the knowledge of God's justice, of God's provision. And in the sure and certain hope, that seed time and harvest faith, he knows that those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come again with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves, bringing in the produce of all they have sown in this life. So with the knowledge of this God who in Christ rules over all things, the believers, to whom this first epistle of Timothy is addressed, are therefore encouraged to pray for those who are in high positions, positions of authority, in order that they as Christians who live under their secular rule might live peaceable lives in godliness and in dignity. Because even though there are these rulers, there is God who rules all. And so, friends, the abiding message, I believe, which Jesus is teaching his disciples is again one which echoes down through history, it echoes in all of our scripture readings for today, it echoes throughout all creation. It is about calling God's human creature, you and I, to recognize, as every other part of God's creation does, to recognize this God who rules providentially over all creation, over all our lives, and therefore seeking the righteousness which he desires for each and every one of us. And so an important feature of the righteousness which God requires is, as our gospel suggests, that we do not worry. Do not be anxious. But the reality is that life is often much more, so much more than the things that we often worry about or have anxiety over. And our Heavenly Father knows our every need. This life with which we have been entrusted points to one of the essential gifts which we have received from God, with which we very often take little conscious notice of. And that is a gift of time. Time itself is one of God's creatures. It is made by the God who became incarnate in time, but the God who is also beyond time. And so, as creatures, as created beings, as God's good human creatures, without His good gift of time, to each and every one of us, you nor I would even exist. We would not be here had not God given us this gift of time. So what we do, not only with our, our time, but also with our lives, what we do with all that we have received, the hands of this good and gracious and generous God, that is what demonstrates in tangible ways the extent and the depth of our thanksgiving and our gratitude to God. In other words, our stewardship of all that we have received, even the gift of time, manifests our thanksgiving and our gratitude. And so whenever we forget that we are the creature, that God is the creator, it is then that things start to get a little complicated. Sometimes the, the folks in our my parents' generation used to say that the younger ones don't forget your place now. 
You know what that means, right? Whenever we forget that we are the creature and not the creator, things start to get a little complicated. We lose our ability to live with gratitude. When we have mistakenly convinced ourselves that the outcome of our lives in this world depends ultimately and solely and necessarily upon our own efforts, our own initiative, then you know what? It is no wonder that we become anxious and that we begin to worry. So often we are tempted to live hurried and, and frenzied lives in this world on account of trying to avoid our creatureliness. I said to the uh, Bible study on Thursday evening that what will happen after Halloween when you go into the shopping malls? What do you think you're going to hear? Christmas. Christmas music. Right? Because we jump right from Halloween over Advent, all four Sundays of Advent, right into Christmas. Right? Because what do they want? They want to get you anxious, get you in the shopping spirit, they call it, the Christmas spirit. To go out and run out and buy all these things for people that you don't even know. <laughs> right? So there are those who through their anxiety and their concern over their acquisitions in this life. And usually in comparison to what other people have. Right? In concern of all these things that tempted to go out and rush out and buy the latest version of whatever it might be. The one they have is perfectly fine. But go out and buy the latest or the newest version of whatever it is that is out there. There are those who in their worry and anxiety over food will be tempted either to consume far too much on one hand or far too little on the other. There are those who in their anxiety and worry in this life that maybe their life plans are not working out as they have perhaps envisioned. And so they are tempted to think negatively or to second guess themselves or to think pessimistically about themselves and their actions. And then sadly there are many who, through their anxiety and worry, usually on account of or in anticipation of suffering great pain, are sorely tempted to hasten their death through medical assisted suicide. And we can think of example after example where persons have forgotten that they are creatures and not the creator. So rush to do all sorts of things that demonstrate ingratitude. And when we yield to the temptation to live in these hurried and frenzied ways, it is a sign that we are beginning to forget that our lives are in the hands of the almighty living God. The God who has ordered all creation. The God who has ordered all that exists. The God who, who has ordered our lives in the midst of all that there is. And so Jesus is saying to you, to me, to all of us, do not worry. Don't be anxious. That is not what this life, this gift of time, is for. So our stewardship, our taking care of something which ultimately belongs to another, is the way in which we manifest our thanks, our thankfulness, and our gratitude. So in the language of Scripture, this means that we demonstrate our thankfulness by striving first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness by walking in humble and faithful obedience to this God day by day and moment by moment. But that is what this life, this gift of time is for. I mean, think about all the things that you may worry about today. What will it matter at the end of your life? I'm sure we all have worries. We all have anxieties that maybe we carry around from time to time or every day. But what might it mean to you to come and lay them down at this altar today? Just like we lay these fruits in place. 
to lay them down in this altar today, to leave them in Jesus' hands, and in exchange to actually strive to let him come in more and more into your life, to move the scripture from up here to here, to let him come in and allow the knowledge that he already knows all of your needs to thereby transform you and transform the way that you navigate this world. In fact, I invite you to do just that today. When you come forward today, bring those worries, bring those anxieties, bring those cares, all of those concerns, leave them before God as we worship. Because as followers of Christ, Jesus is seeking to train us in a kind of patience in life, which is virtuous. We're to be good stewards of time to demonstrate our gratitude and our thankfulness with the time that we have been given in tangible ways. It means that we really learn to trust this God, the God of all time, with the time that He has given us in this life, the past, the present, and the time that He may have allotted to us in the future. And what does this thanksgiving to God look like? Well, that's where we go back to Timothy. In tangible terms, we see it in the quiet and peaceable, peace-seeking, peace-making lives that we live before God and with one another. But that is a sign of our grateful. That is a sign of our utter dependence on this God who provides for us. This God who rules over us. Let us pray. God of the living, with all your creatures, great and small, we sing your bounty and your goodness. For in the harvest of land and ocean, in the cycles of the seasons, and the wonders of each creature, you reveal your generosity, you reveal all that you have given us. Teach us the gratitude that dispels envy, that dispels fear, that dispels worry and anxiety, that we may honor each gift as you cherish your creation and praise in all times and in every place. Amen. Amen.